one of our uh, one of our topics, I think we had this as the first topic. Yes, is the month of November is famous mm -hmm. for being <laughs> no, not November. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna sort of head this one up, and maybe oh, I'm like completely cut off. That's fine. I'll be the <laughs> the headless person talking about <laughs> no, not November. Um, this year, it doesn't seem like many people are doing it. Um, the one place I found Aww. like active, seemingly active communities and people who are still on board with it is the UK, which is not at all surprising. I think that's where most of the sort of pseudoscience around like porn dependency um, and some of these, you know, harmful effects of masturbation and porn has been the heaviest. So that was something interesting that I noticed this year. Uh, but yeah, I guess uh, we can maybe go around and give some takes, maybe say whether or not we're participating. <laughs> I am not. <laughs> like the closest thing I can consider is like there was no shave November like a while back. That's the closest I've gotten to ever participating in anything like that. The, I never got and that's to raise awareness for cancer, right? I yeah, I think so. Oh. Yeah, yeah, that was the prostate cancer thing. And there's NaNoWriMo. That's the much yeah. better, I think, November. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the, the whole, like, <sighs> pseudoscience, all the science behind the, the not nutting is just so interesting to me. And also the, like, very clear overlap between authoritarianism, white supremacy, and this uh, outsized concern for semen. Um, <laughs> <laughs> That's a great way of putting it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, who am I to say how concerned one should be with semen? But I do think that if you're going to make a case for being concerned with semen, the evidence that you uh, bring to the discussion should probably have some kind of validity. And it just really doesn't. There's just really not a lot of evidence to indicate that semen retention is uh, at all useful and pretty good evidence that, you know, netting is, is pretty good for you. So. It is interesting, though. My friend Zarina, her partner, yeah, no. just, I think his name is Eric's paper, was showing that the military, the U.S. military, used sexual frustration to motivate troops in World War One. I, I want to say, Whoa. or like starting in World War One. That's fascinating. And, oh, yeah. I mean, I, I just read like the synopsis of the paper. I haven't read the paper, but... So it certainly, you know, there's evidence for it that it was, you know, a, that it was something that these people who were in charge, like, meant to do um, and like the ways that they did it. So like hiring attractive people to work at the cash register at the places the soldiers would shop um, and setting up dances, but then also like making it so they couldn't actually have sex with anyone. They locked up girls who they uh, thought were having sex before marriage um, under the guise of public health, but they literally incarcerated them. Well, I just moved back to Michigan, which is, of course, home of uh, Kellogg's breakfast cereal, started <laughs> by one of America's like <laughs> preeminent anti-masturbation guys. OG nofap. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the real OG nofap uh, up here. Thankfully, it doesn't, you know, it's, you know, not still a thing here as much. Surprised um, there's no <laughs> nofap science about bland cereals. I mean, there was, like, quite literally, that was the whole. Why don't they bring back the, the advocacy? Well, I'm saying, why don't they bring back that advocacy now? Mm. Oh, is that too pseudoscientific for them? I did want to talk more about the um, the tie-ins with right-wing stuff as well as uh, the sort of like manosphere in general. And I, I love the way you put it earlier, Kathy, of just like a huge part of this is just like thinking that like <laughs> semen is way more important than it is. And it's these, you know, I think there's a, a very clear tie into like a lot of these other ideas that they have, you know, around uh, self-denial, around um, you know, really being anti-pleasure in general, thinking about sexuality as something that involves them and not other people. Like there's just so many aspects of this that, you know, I think are pretty clear uh, in why it attracts all the right wing folks. Um, but Kathy, you probably have more to say on that front than I do. Yeah, I mean, I'm no expert on any of this, but I have read several think pieces that make the connection. And I mean, when you look at it, it's like, the Proud Boys advocate no fab. Um, 
when you look at the overlap between like NOFAP and the manosphere, like you said, men going their own way, um, there's definitely a lot of overlap there. I think there's something about controlling reproduction that is, you know, very closely tied to authoritarianism and fascism and white supremacy. I think, I almost wonder if it's, if it's, and I've, this has never occurred to me before, and I may be completely and totally off base, but I don't know. There's something about like, you know, the middle class, like anxious white girl does anorexia because it's like a thing she can mm. control. And I oh, wonder if these yeah. men are just feel so out of control in their lives and just like everything is the status erosion and the economic malaise and the fact that men are doing so much poorly in education and that education is becoming so much more important. I wonder if this is just like their version of that, where like, this is mm. a thing I feel like I can control. Well, the and other just, guy I was going to bring up is Jordan Peterson. Is he on this train or not? Does anyone know? <laughs> I mean, he's on the all meat diet train, so it's not like <laughs> oh. he's beyond the realm of like personal health and care pseudoscience, but no, not that I've heard, though. I am, thank God, no expert in Jordan Peterson. Uh, he may be, but not that, I've, not that I've heard about. I mean, he's very much about, like, kind of Catholic sexual mores, as far as I can tell. So yeah. it wouldn't surprise me from, like, a Catholic angle if he were about it. But otherwise, I'm not really sure. But I know Gavin McGinnis is a big no-fapper. So no-fap, the online forum and community, uh, which is separate from No Nut November, actually distanced themselves from No Nut November because Gavin McGinnis and the Proud Boys had like adopted it as their thing. Um, so these like more, you know, fake science, but scientifically focused and like anti-porn addiction guys have like tried to distance themselves from the right-wing stuff. Um, it was interesting. I actually, I brought up their site and they have uh, Billie Eilish on there. Huh. Um, I guess, Why? I guess uh, she's apparently on that train. <laughs> she came out yeah. publicly criticizing pornography. Yeah, I remember that. Just she's so talked about how she discovered porn from a young age and that actually messed with her body image. Like that. But is it porn or is it the message that she was getting about porn? Because that's what I've found is that when you look at the studies of who is addicted to pornography. What differentiates someone who's addicted to pornography versus yeah. someone who's not is not how much time they spend doing it, not how much negative impact measurably it has on their life. It is, do they feel ashamed of it? And usually is it from a religious perspective? And it's mm. like, yeah, if you're taught that doing this thing that's incredibly pleasurable is deeply shameful, you're gonna have a problem with it. You're going to have a, a distance between what you are doing and what you are supposed to believe. You're going to have a cognitive dissonance, which is really unpleasant. But for the vast, vast majority of users, it's not shameful. There's nothing wrong with it. It doesn't impact their lives in a, ne in a negative way at all. And so if people have a different idea of what pornography is, the research shows they're, they, by and large, don't have a problem with it. Like for me, you know, I was taught, I was actually, I just watched Fireproof, the 2008 uh, evangelical Christian movie starring Kirk Cameron. Okay. <laughs> and it's a, it's a movie about him like saving his marriage and in it, his wife is complaining about his porn use. Never heard of this. Lucky you. But I, I was watching her and she was saying, you don't understand what I have to compete with. I'm so humiliated. Mm -hmm. And this idea that you as a person are competing with why is it a zero sum? Why is it either or? Like, why can't somebody fat to uh, pornography and then also enjoy real life sex? Which, again, the research shows is exactly what happens. Like the vast majority of people who look at pornography, it has no negative impact on their sex lives whatsoever. But we're taught mm. that this is somehow competitive, that we are supposed to compare ourselves to these. It's like, no, this is their job. Like, this is what they do for a living. Like, I'm not right. going to co compare myself to you know, the best chef on the planet. That doesn't mean when my, I cook for my husband, he's going to be like, disgusting, you know, like that doesn't make any sense. But sex is magic. So we, we believe otherwise. And you can only watch porn or have it, you know, there's no, right. like, you can't do it with <laughs> anyone else. You can't do it no. with 
you know, it's it's a solo thing. I'm not sure if that speaks to like lack of creativity or just pure stigma at that point. Cause like- Both. Yeah. The stigma is, is, is so um, limiting, you know? It just limits people's imagination. And it's also like, listen, um, Porn is more diverse than any fucking network streaming reality show situation. Like this idea that like pornography uh, supports narrow beauty standards, like mm. television does, movies do, magazines do, but streaming porn, like it extremely diverse. Well, it reminds me, so the conversation earlier about, you know, sort of the, the pseudoscience and people saying like, this really badly affected my life and like conflating the issues with body image and other things in society really reminds me of a lot of the conversations around like suicide among trans youth and this idea yeah. that like right-wingers have that like oh being trans makes you like mentally ill and suicidal and it's like right. no it's the <laughs> everybody it's the yeah, right. Everybody not accepting it and telling you you're an abomination and you're going to hell and, you know, yeah. all of that aspect. Uh, it's the stigma, stupid. It's not the sex. Mm -hmm. It's not the porn. It's not the being trans. It's the way we treat these things as a society, like totally unnecessarily.